Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So today I am actually going to be using my new laptop for the first time. I've just got the HP Spectre 360 turn one laptop. So it actually folds in half and you can draw on the screen like a tablet. So I've done this sketch on paper and I've scanned it into my laptop and I've just imported it into Photoshop. So I use Photoshop for all my digital art. So what I've done is I've just turned the opacity down on that sketch layer and I've put a new layer on top and I'm just going to go over the line work now just to crispen it up so that we can delete the sketch layer underneath. So like I said this is the first time that I'm going to be using this laptop and it's quite um, a different thing to actually draw on the screen. I'm quite used to using my Wacom tablet. So. The one noticeable difference I would say which has taken me a little to get used to is the different surface. So when you use your Wacom tablet it's almost like you are drawing on paper because you have kind of like a resistance with the, with the surface whereas when you're drawing on a shiny screen, it's a glass screen, it's obviously a lot more smooth and almost too slippery to start with. But it's just something new to get used to. I can definitely be more accurate with my lines. I can draw one continuous line for longer drawing on the screen, whereas on your tablet, I find you can almost run out of space on the tablet to do that. And it's harder to do a straight line just by looking at your screen and drawing on the tablet. So, so far so good. Um, the performance of the laptop is really good. Um, the speed, it seems to handle Photoshop really well. It is 16, um, has got 16 gigabytes of RAM. I would recommend 16 being your minimum. If you're going to be using this for editing or Photoshop or any other creative software, 16 gigabytes of RAM is your minimum. Ideally, you would want maybe more than that if you were having lots of programs open at once, but just for, you know, I'm jo I just do this in my spare time. It's not my full time job. Um, so it's more than enough room for me to do this and it just enables Photoshop to run smoothly while you've got other applications open in the background. So this laptop has been a massive step up for me and I'm really enjoying using it. So now I'm going to name my layer to make sure that everything is organised. The more layers you get, the more complicated it can be. So it's a good idea to name all the layers. So this is my line layer. So I'm just going to do this. All with the pen tool. And I'm just going to add a new layer and I'm going to call that colour and now I'm going to do the colour. So the colour layer has to go underneath the line layer so that the lines show over the top. The one thing I would say about this laptop is because you fold it over, you actually you lose your keypad when you fold it over to draw on it. So you do lose your keyboard shortcuts. Um, so with things like doing the undo tool, you can't just click Control Z. Um, so things do take a little bit longer like that, but with the pen, you can um, change the settings. There are two buttons on it, like you would kind of have on your Wacom um, pen. So you can program those buttons to do whatever shortcut you like, but obviously you're restricted to only two. So I ended up changing my right click to the alt shortcut so that I could pick my colours um, 
like you, you usually would using the shortcut instead of having to go to the, the dropper and then picking your colour. Um, and then my left click is just the eraser tool so that I don't have to go over to the eraser and click that. So now I'm just colouring the bunny in. Um, as you can see, because we've put the layer underneath the lines, it's showing through nicely. So we'll colour him in and then we'll look at doing some shading and some light source. changing the colour, it was a little bit too dark so I just went over with a lighter colour. Um, now let's just do his eyes and then we'll have a look at doing some shadow. So the shadow is just that next step to take it from quite a flat image to being more 3D and have more depth to it. So I'm going to imagine that my light source is going to be coming from the top left almost central but more top left down on top of the bunny so we'll have to do our shadows in accordance to that okay so now we're going to add a new layer and we're going to name that shadow that's it and then you're going to go to your drop down menu and you're going to change the layer to a multiply layer so what this does is this allows you to go over all the layers and it reacts differently with the different colours so it gives a shadow effect and so it allows the colour underneath to show through. So I would pick a, if you're doing a shadow you want to pick the cold colour, that's why I've gone for the in between the blue and the black colour and I would also recommend turning your opacity right down, I mean maybe like 11 or 10 percent. Remember if you take your pen off the paper you will start a new depth of colour as it was so make sure you keep your pencil on the layer as you draw your shadow like I am here. If I was to lift up my pencil and then reapply on the same shadow it would be darker because you're adding more layers of colour because your opacity isn't 100 percent. So I'm just going around now and I'm just adding some shadow where the creases are, keeping in mind where my light source is going to be coming from. And as you can see, it already starts to bring the drawing to life a bit more. another layer and we're going to make this an overlay layer so this is going to go on top of all the other layers so an overlay does kind of the same as the multiply but it creates a lighter color so it overlays the color so this is good for a light source and it gives a nice warm um, a warm glow so what you want to do is when you color pick go for a nice warm orangey yellow color and go right to the top and I know to go in between the colour and as it gets whiter. So you just want a nice tinge of warm. 
so we'll just click that colour there. Again, I wouldn't have your opacity at 100% because it will come out neon yellow. But now you can see that when you go over the colours now, it gives a natural glow. So it interacts again with each colour differently. So it will interact with the grey colour differently to the black colours. So as you can see, it gives a nice glow to where your light source would be. So that is it that is your final product so that's a super easy way of just bringing a sketch to life that you've maybe done on paper you can scan into photoshop or you can sketch straight into photoshop and use the same system with the layers to create your digital painting so i hope you enjoyed that video um, i would highly recommend the hp spectra um, it's been really nice to work with actually and it makes just make things a lot more efficient and it saves you having to carry around your tablet and a big laptop and I had an extra screen I used to plug in as well so now it means I can downsize which is great for me and um, so yeah save it either as a JPEG or a PNG if you need the background to be transparent then save as a PNG um, and also don't forget to save as your Photoshop file as well so I hope you enjoyed that video um, so that's it, that's your final product. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys. It was just a quick one just to show you the basics of drawing a digital image in Photoshop. So if you're just starting out, it's quite a good system to learn how to, you know, name your layers, layer them properly in the right order, and also just a quick way to add shadow and um, light to your drawing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to get many more like this. Um, I would highly recommend the HP Spectre, um, I've really enjoyed using it, it's really efficient, there's no glitches, it's run smoothly and I'm really getting to grips with working on the screen. Um, it's nice to just have a two-in-one laptop, you don't need to carry any more tablets or extra screens, it's a lot more travel friendly, so yeah. Um, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.